Hey everybody, one that always bored, never boring. You're stuck in the house. You've already mowed the dog, vacuumed the garden and brushed the carpets. You're stuck for things to do. The kids want to play a game, but you'll be darned if you're going to play pie face or top trumps again. So what are you going to do? Obviously, you're going to make maths fun. And that's why today we are looking at hair and tortoise. This is a game that's actually really good, but also a great game for improving a child's knowledge of maths and numbers. This is a game that I was originally introduced to when I was a small child. My cousin had a version of this game. Of course, she had a version that had really beautiful artwork, uh, reminiscent of like an old ladybird book. The version we're going to look at today is a much newer version which has hip, cool artwork to be down with the kids. And before we take a look at it and I tell you what it's all about, I do just want to draw attention to the really bizarre advertising blurb on the back of this box. I'm going to read it to you because it's so unusual. There's nothing like it that I've ever seen before on the back of a board game. Not even those knowingly cringy games um, like Exploding Kittens and stuff like that. Um, so it says, The most ingenious race game ever devised is No Idle Boast. With over 2 million copies sold, Hare and Tortoise is something of a legend, and the Game Crazy Germans even made it their game of the year. Oh, those Game Crazy Germans. This is a serious accolade. The Germans love their games like we love our chicken tikka masala. And they've not given an award to a British inventor since Goering nominated RJ Mitchell's Supermarine Spitfire. Is that a, is that a World War II joke? Ooh. Um, so what is Hare and Tortoise? Well, it's a game of skill, cunning and wisdom. It's a game that will make you laugh one minute and frustrate the hell out of you the next. Above all, it's the greatest 60 minutes of fun you will ever experience sitting around a table. You don't need to know more, so what are you waiting for? Go on, take the plunge. You won't regret it, we promise. How weird is that? That's a really odd thing to put on the back of a box. It's like a really, I mean, obviously it's cringy as anything. Um, you know, once you're, once you're resorting to tikka masala jokes and, and references to World War II, um, yeah, you're in cringe territory, but it's also really, really salesman-like. It's not a lot of information about the game itself. Very, very odd. But that aside, this is a very good game. Let's take a look at it. Being called Hare and Tortoise, it should come as no surprise that this game is a reimagining of the classic tale of the Hare and the Tortoise and their race. However, this is one of those games where it has a theme, it has a thematic nature to it, but it deals with that theme in a slightly abstracted way. For example, it's not a case that some players are hares and some players are tortoises. Everybody gets a playing piece which has the hare and the tortoise pictured on it and at different points during the game you will be both the hare and the tortoise because this is a race game in which you have to weigh up whether to rush ahead whether to stop and wait a few turns whether to plod on slowly and methodically or whether to go backwards in order to gain an advantage later on in the game so it takes all the elements of the story but then draws them out into a more abstract experience. But still one that children will be able to draw those thematic parallels. They will say, oh, I, you know, when I'm racing ahead, um, I am like the hare, but now I'm, I'm kind of got into a situation where I can't advance. I need to stop. I need to wait a while. And meanwhile, the slow and methodical players are more like the tortoise as they catch up with me. The other thing to note about the game is that on the surface it looks like a very traditional roll and move experience. The board itself, you have a single root board, you go from the start to the end. There are spaces on the board and there are things to do on the spaces that you land on. And it has a very traditional, um, old-fashioned style of presentation to it that makes it look like you're getting something maybe a step up from snakes and ladders but that's not actually what you're getting at all it's taken those elements um, of familiarity but it has wrapped them around something which is 
um, a little more unusual, a little more Euro game, something that makes you think a little bit more, and something that is going to um, require some careful planning and a good knowledge of numbers. Because here's how it works. At the start of the game, every player will have carrot cards in their hand that add up to 65. You will need a lot more than 65 carrots to win, but 65 is what you start with. You will also start the game with three lettuces. Lettuces are bad. You don't want lettuces. And the aim of the game is to get rid of your lettuces and then use your carrots as efficiently and effectively as possible to be the first person to finish the race. And really, the only things you need to know are if you move forwards, it costs you carrots. If you move backwards, you gain carrots. And if you're the first person to cross the finish line, you have to have less than 10 carrots in your hand. If you have more than 10 carrots, you cannot finish the race. You want to be in a situation where you're constantly handling the amount of carrots you have so that you can make the moves you want whilst being in a position to actually finish the race. The person who finishes in second place can't have any more than 20 carrots and the person in third place can't have any more than 30 and so on. But really, it's all about coming in first. It's all about winning. And you will notice from that description, uh, no mention of dice because there are no dice in this game. It is completely diceless. Instead, on your turn, you are just making a choice. Are you going to move forwards or backwards? If you are moving forwards, you can move forwards as many spaces as you want, as long as you have the carrots to do it. Moving one space will cost you one carrot. Beyond that, it starts to exponentially increase in cost and they give you a handy dandy card so you can keep track of this. But for example, See, moving one square will cost you one carrot. So each turn you can effectively go one space forward and spend one card. And you'll see that there are actually 63 spaces on the board. So effectively, if you wanted to move forward one space every turn, you have enough carrots to do it. But the chances are someone else is gonna to get to the end of the board before you if you move that slowly. Occasionally, you are going to need to race forwards. Moving two spaces will cost you three carrots. Moving three spaces will cost you six carrots. Four will cost you 10 and so on. And it goes on and on and on. And they actually give you uh, calculations up to 40 spaces, which requires 820 carrots. If you ever have 820 carrots in your hand, you've probably dawdled a little bit too long. So you are spending your carrots to move forwards and you can move forwards to any space on the board except for a tortoise. We will talk about the tortoise spaces a little bit later on. There are effectively three different types of spaces that you can move to. The first type is the carrot, the carrot space here. If you move forward to a carrot space, you spend however many carrots necessary to reach that space and nothing happens for the rest of your turn. On your following turn, you can continue moving again or you can choose to stay on the carrot space. If you choose to stay on the space, you can either draw 10 carrots from the carrot pile, so you have an extra 10 carrots in your hand, or you can put 10 carrots back into the carrot pile. It's a way of actually controlling how many carrots you have in your hand. Towards the end of the game, if you wanna keep down low to make sure you've got less than 10 to get across the finish line, the carrot spaces are a good way of doing that because you can ditch 10 at a time. But of course, if you've got 30 or 40 carrots you want to get rid of, you're going to have to stay on that space for several turns in a row, gradually eating your way through the carrots like the hare whilst the tortoise players gradually plod along and catch up with you. The second type of space that you can land on are the number spaces. They will either have a single number or they will have a set of numbers. And again, nothing will happen when you move on those spaces to begin with. However, when it gets back to your turn, if your playing piece is in the position stated here. So for example, if I was in third place, because these fellas were up here, I would win carrots from the bank. This is another way of getting carrots. So I'm, in this case, I would get 10 times the number printed on the board. So I would actually get 30 more carrots, giving me an opportunity to then race ahead and catch up with the people that were ahead of me. Of course, this does mean that if I'm on a space that has a one on it, and I'm in first place, I'm only gonna get 10 carrots. So there is a built-in balancing mechanism in the number system. You can race ahead 
and stand on a one, knowing that the other players can't catch up with you, so you're going to get some carrots, but you're only going to get 10 carrots. Alternatively, you can hang back, knowing that other players are getting ahead of you, but knowing that you are safely banking carrots that you can use for a big burst of speed later on. It's a very clever balancing mechanism. The third type of space that you can advance onto is the lettuce. When you move on to a lettuce, nothing happens on your turn, but you will flip your counter face down because you're going to eat a lettuce. On your next turn, all you will do is flip your counter back up. And then on your following turn, you can move on. However, in so doing that, you've burned a couple of turns, but you've got rid of one of your lettuce cards. And remember, you have three of these and you cannot win the game if you have any remaining. So as you advance around the board, you have to stop on at least three of the lettuce spaces to get rid of lettuces. And there are only four spaces on the board where that's possible. The fourth type of space that you can advance onto is a hair. And this is a concession to a more traditional random type of game, something that um, acts as a bit of a leveler for children of different ages, because you draw a card from random and you do whatever it says. In this case, it says, show us your carrots. Count your carrot cards face up on the table so that everyone knows how many you have left. So that's a bad one. But sometimes you might get a good one. There are cards that will say things like, if you're in first place, you have to give carrots to other people. But if you're in last place, everybody has to give you carrots. There's a, a sense of randomness in that, which is perhaps the weakest part of the game. But like I say, it is a good way of adding a little bit of a situation where um, if you're really struggling, sometimes a bit of good luck can help you out. Um, there's certain cards that will say things like um, reset the number of carrots in your hand to 65, which is what you start with, which can be fantastic if you've been running low on carrots and you suddenly get a load more. But if you're right at the end of the game and you suddenly get 65 carrots in your hand, you cannot cross that finish line. So most of the cards are beneficial in certain situations and detrimental in other situations. It really is potluck. So those are all the spaces you can advance to. You are not allowed to advance onto a tortoise. You can only step on a tortoise if you are going backwards. And in fact, if you choose to go backwards on your turn, you have to go back to the most recent tortoise space. So if I was here and I choose to go backwards, I have to go to here. If I was already there, I can't choose to go backwards because there are no tortoise spaces here. If I was here, and I chose to go backwards, I would only be able to go backwards once. For each space you go backwards, you draw 10 carrots from the carrot pile. So if you can go back a good few spaces, you can really replenish your hand of cards. And you can see you obviously get a lot more carrots for going backwards than it costs you to go forwards. Going forwards one space is only one carrot, but going backwards one space is 10 carrots. It's quite easy to build your carrots back up but you're losing ground every time you do that. But it is generally the quickest and most effective way to replenish your hand. And of course, sometimes it's really worth it. For example, if you have to go back four spaces, you get 40 carrots. On your next turn, you can jump forwards four spaces. And if we look at our handy dandy card, going forwards four spaces will only cost you 10. So you've actually gained 30 carrots to get back to where you were before. And that really is the crux of the game. The game is all about moving forwards, getting into the right positions, choosing when to retreat to gain more carrots, whilst also constantly thinking about where the other players are on the board and whether you can stand on a number space to acquire some additional carrots. Using the numbers to gain carrots is usually a beneficial thing, but if they're getting towards the end of the game, it can be quite frustrating for them if you can maneuver your pieces so they're constantly gaining carrots when they want to be getting rid of them. And that's it, that's the game. If you're playing at a fast clip, you can probably get through a game in 40 to 60 minutes. It's recommended for ages eight and up. And I would say that's about right for the level of maths involved. And you can play with from two to six players. It's generally best, I think with three or four. Um, if you play with only two players, then each player has to have two counters and they have to get both of them home to win. Uh, there's also a team variant where you can play in teams of two or three. 
but generally I think this is best as a three or four player game with each person controlling one counter. And I really do think this is a fantastic family game because it is fun, it's engaging, you're constantly doing things even if it's not your turn, um, you're thinking ahead, you're planning what you're going to do next with your carrots. You're also looking at where other players are on the board in order to make use of these numbers. It's something that's constantly got you thinking. There are situations like when you have to eat a lettuce where you're not going to be doing anything for a couple of turns. But that tends to just give you time to work out your next set of calculations. It's a nice breather to take a look at what cards you've got in your hand, study the board a little bit more, think about your next move. And I think it's very successful at what it does. It really does require you to think about the numbers, to think about the mathematics, to be adding and subtracting from your carrot total. Um, there's a really nice balancing system. Generally, no one ever gets too far ahead because if they do get too far ahead, just like in the story of the hare and the tortoise, they tend to have to hang around for a bit, giving other players a chance to catch up. And the fact that you do have to burn through your carrots in order to even get across the finish line just makes it so that you can't just build up a really big stock of carrots and then run. I think it's got fun, bright artwork. This isn't obviously my favorite design. I much prefer the design I had uh, that I played when I was a child, but it's bright and bold and engaging. And I don't really have much more to say than that. I really recommend this one for families. And like I say, being able to play up to six, even a large family can get involved with this one. But that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for listening. If you have enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you have really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye everyone. Bye-bye.